All right, so you might remember in the last part of the demonstration, I showed you how to build a great looking dashboard coming out of Google Analytics one uh, data source. You can see here, I added filters and so forth. In this uh, second part, I'm going to now make it a little bit more complicated. I'm going to add a few data sources. In fact, I'm going to go across Google Analytics, Salesforce, AdWords, and my Google spreadsheets. And I'm going to show you that you can do this again without any coding, any scripting, and by just pointing and clicking and bringing in objects. So let's uh, create a new sheet here. And this new sheet, I'm going to call it 360 because I want to have a 360 view of my business. Now, I like the look that I had earlier, so I'm going to uh, highlight, uh, copy, and paste the look and feel that I had earlier. Now, that's a great benefit, again, of the uh, Sysense Prism uh, application is I can use great shortcuts, the ones that you use to in Excel and Word, uh, so you can uh, uh, build things uh, much faster. I do uh, see here that uh, this image is a little boring, so I'm going to uh, build another one and align it. See, the application allows me to align objects as well. It's very uh, useful. Also, I'm going to bring in a, a few filters. We're going to start and do something very simple here by simply just bringing the uh, beginning of the funnel all the way to the end of the funnel. So we're going to take a look at uh, conversion data for a given month and opportunity data for another month. Those, those are two different data sources, conversion coming from Google Analytics and uh, opportunity count coming from uh, Salesforce. I'm going to show you that I can have them side by side and a good looking uh, visualization and use my filters, okay? So let's just take a look at my rectangular scale again. Same shortcuts, going to cut and paste that, align it to my filter, and now I'm going to add uh, some data to it. So uh, for this one, we're going to look at AdWords conversions. I'm going to bring in um, my counts, and I'm going to call that conversions. I'm also going to customize uh, my indicator. You can see uh, most applications out there will require some code in order to create a threshold uh, uh, data. But in our case, we calculate. We look at the data, we calculate your ranges. Of course, you can edit them, but what makes it really fast is that in just a few clicks, you can go in and uh, add your data as well as your threshold. So now I've got a great looking uh, set of conversions. You can see here, I like my square earlier, but I'm going to copy and paste this uh, same object. Benefit of doing that, the thresholds, the names, everything's in there. All I need to do is um, basically edit um, my uh, data. So I'm adding now my uh, opportunity uh, counts, and I'm going to rename that. It knows that it's a different data, so it asks me to rename it. And now, all of a sudden, I have um, two great uh, boxes that give me conversion data and opportunities. I want to make sure that I understand what object is linked to what filter. So another great functionality here, we give you preview. So you can click here on month and you can see on the top left, that's the month, even though it's the same name, that's the month it affects. The other month is the other one. So that means the filter here on the left is going to affect the box on the left. I'm going to do the same thing for um, the opportunity on the right. And now you can see, I can look at versions in August against opportunities in October. You might assume, for instance, that uh, a big spike of uh, conversions in leaves in August might create a big spike of opportunities in October. Pretty cool, very straightforward, very simple. Now let's do something a little bit more complicated. I want to actually see the exact numbers. And I want to create a table that allows me to see the numbers from conversions all the way to opportunities. So let's create a pivot. In my pivot, I'm going to bring in now my dates, right? Because that's uh, what we want to do. Uh, by month. I'm going to bring in my ID, uh, my counts of conversions, uh, and I'm going now to take a look at my salesforce.com leads. Uh, I'm going to bring that in as well. I'm going to call that leads so we know what we're looking at. Uh, opportunity, same deal. Okay. And I'm also going to bring in my uh, accounts. Okay. So now I have conversions all the way to my opportunities and accounts. Okay, opportunities here. Um, I'm going to make sure that it's affected by the right scope. In this case, I'm just going to say, just show me all the data, not just what I've selected up there. So now you can see, April all the way to November, I've got some data. Some sources don't have data, like uh, Google Analytics. Uh, maybe I didn't pull that data. And uh, Salesforce, um, maybe I just didn't have any data here. We're using a uh, sample data source. All right, now, uh, because I don't have all the data for everything, I'm going to filter. Now, 
Uh, filtering is very easy as well. I can filter by number of months. So show me the last three months because I can see the last three months is where I actually have data. Uh, update that. And there you go. Now, September, October, November data. And I can see that in a very straightforward fashion. I'm going to rename all of these things. And I'm actually going to move them around um, because I want to see uh, the full flow. I want to see uh, leads, conversions, accounts, opportunities. I also want to try and identify my cost, right? So how much does it cost me? Now, the cost information is in AdWords, and the uh, opportunities, of course, in Salesforce. But I can see here, I can drag this over. Now I've got my total cost. And off of that, uh, which I've now um, put in dollars, off of that, I can create a uh, calculation. So I can use the, the bar here, and I can say, OK, just bring me the sum of the cost and divide that by my lead numbers, which again, leads are in Salesforce. So here you're doing multiple, across multiple source, you're doing calculations across multiple source, uh, potentially a large amount of data. Earlier I was saying I was dealing with about a half a billion, uh, half a million records. And you'll see how quickly this uh, does it. In fact, let me show you here, um, I'm adding this to my calculation. You saw earlier uh, when I put that in, it was red and now that it's completed it's green which is another great functionality of the the application it allows me to parse calculations even before I save them so I know that once I've put the formula together it's going to work so there you go so now I have my cost per lead and there you go now uh, I'm gonna add this cost per lead to the repository which means that now it's transferable object it can be used just about any uh, other places inside uh, my report and, and uh, places using this uh, analytics. All right, so let's clean up the filters. Let's move up the table that I just renamed end to end. So now we've got a nice looking end to end last three months, conversions, accounts, opportunities, cost, cost per lead. I want to do some sophisticated calculations. Like, for instance, I want to understand uh, my contribution. You know, so yeah, I've got that many conversions. Um, uh, in September, but you know, if it was if there was more data here, you'd probably want to know how much does September contribute to the entire number. Well, as I explained earlier, we have um, so as I explained earlier, we have uh, a pre-aggregated data. <coughs> so I want to do some uh, aggregated counts. Like I want to understand the contribution of my September leads to uh, the other three months. We have aggregated that data, so I can click on contribution. And all of a sudden, now I can see, uh, when I format this data, I can see that September contributed the full 42% of the entire conversions of my data. I can do the same thing for uh, my opportunities, so I can now easily compare um, my data. And I can see now November was 28% of the entire opportunity count I have. Something that might not have been obvious uh, here, obviously, it's a small uh, data set, uh, so you can easily infer that. But if you had a large data set, you probably would want uh, to add uh, some easy uh, visuals to it. So let me uh, show you how easy it is to um, create a linked table. So I've just copied and paste, pasted the earlier table, and I've gotten rid of the stuff that I really don't care about, uh, the strict numbers. I just want to do a visualization uh, on percentages. So how do you do that? Well, you can simply click create link chart and just magically now my chart is being added I'm going to resize it and rename it and now you've got your contribution chart now you might think okay I don't like the bars like that and I want to customize this again very simple to change your charts I'm going to pick it to my stack bars now there's hundreds of possibilities you can change your chart to but you can see how quickly just by pointing and clicking how I was able to customize my chart so there you have it now I got my traffic data, and uh, I want to share that uh, on the web. So I'm going to publish that, and you can see SciSense within the same software now allows me to connect to my host here. I'm just picking my local host, uh, publish, and uh, very quickly you'll see that my data is available. I can see it right here on the web. Again, everything that I did earlier is highly interactive, so anybody using the information on the web can play with it just the way I could play with it in my full desktop and they can print it. It'll do great print quality and you can do preview on that. The tabs, everything's available, everything's interactive. You know, even better, as a Sysense user, 
you can customize the view for yourself. So here I've got this little uh, pencil here. I can click on it and I can move objects. You can even see that the table that I'd hidden behind my visualization is available to me. I can move uh, my pictures because uh, I just want to have the Salesforce.com logo on the right. And there you go. So now I haven't affected everybody else's view. I've just affected my view. It's a great way for end users to further customize their view of their data. Uh, many of our customers appreciate that. You can share this data uh, just about anywhere publicly as long as I've got the rights. So here I'm looking at data inside Internet Explorer, but I can just pick that and then uh, drop it inside. I can see here this is uh, uh, Chrome, and it works just the same way inside Chrome. Uh, and in fact, most users will end up using it inside the Salesforce.com tab, which you can see here, the report that I just produced has been exported inside Salesforce. Again, fully interactive. You can see absolutely everything. So that is how you create a great set of reports across multiple data sources right inside Salesforce.